Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Wiley. I'm here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about cameras. Uh, if you watch my other video, you know that I just got rid of my Sony a7S II. It was a great camera. I used it for almost anything that's really professional. So like going out to CES 2018, doing any sort of plays or anything that, you know, it requires me to look professional. And the reason why I did that wasn't because it wasn't a great camera. It was because it was a good time to get rid of it. Because the next camera that Sony is going to be getting out is the Sony a7S III. So the value of that particular camera wasn't going to hold much longer. So I sold it at a time when I can get the most value out of it. Now I could have held on to that money and got the a7S III when it came out. Uh, obviously you would have to pay a little bit more into it. It's probably going to be an expensive camera. But in the meantime, what I really wanted to do and... I got the GH5 mostly because it was a good deal and it offered something that no other camera in the market currently has, which is it allows me to, uh, to play with 422 10-bit color depth. If you look at all of the other hybrid cameras, this is the only one currently that I know of that can shoot 422 10-bit internally. So I don't have to hook out or hook up an external video recorder in order to get that. So that's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I am using 10-bit 422 on the Blackmagic camera, and that's the f uh, that's the camera that's filming me right now. But unfortunately, that camera is big and bulky, and it stays in the studio, so I don't really use it outside the studio. This is something that I can bring with me. This is something that's very portable, and I definitely wanted to have a camera system in my inventory that could do that. So, got it at a good price, and here it is. Uh, so for this video, what I did was I went ahead and recorded a very unscientific test. So I just took the two cameras that I have uh, with me right now and uh, the ones that I use the most. So the new GH5 and my Fuji X-H1 and I took them side by side. I recorded a short bit of video and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it into Premiere Pro and kind of push all of the color corrections to the maximum to see what kind of detail I get out of both of them. This is not a comparison video, okay? Both these cameras do really good things uh, in their respective places, you know? Like, this one is more for if you want to learn or you want to use color grading posts. Definitely a professional setup, especially if you use some really good Cineglass. The Fuji X-H1 is kind of like their entry level into like, you know, good video and cinematic video. It's very user-friendly. The picture profiles right out of camera is super great. I don't need to do any color grading for my vlogs when I use the X-H1. That's why I love it so much. I'm not going to be doing it with this particular one. So let's go ahead and jump into Premiere Pro and look at the two clips. So the first clip, which is the MP4 file, that's going to be the GH5. And the MOV file is going to be the Fuji X-H1. As you can see, uh, both cameras, I had it set in their default picture profile. So in auto white balance, as you can see, the GH5 it was a little bit warmer, X-H1 a little bit cooler, but uh, you can change that in post any way you like. But both of the picture profiles look pretty good out of camera. I generally don't use the default picture profile in my X-H1, so I like the picture profile a lot better when I change it to suit my needs. But for this particular example, I just wanted the cameras both in default settings. So let's go ahead and go into the basic corrections and we're going to go ahead and play around with um, editing both of these uh, particular shots uh, using just basic color correction. So we can play around with the exposure. As you can see, if I go all the way to the maximum, all the way up to the maximum four stops of light, uh, the picture holds up really well. Uh, definitely a lot of detail there. and. I mean, you can use the entire range if you really wanted to, but it looks like it does a really good job. Contrast, as you can see, when I bump it all the way up, the picture seems to hold up pretty well right there, looking really nice. And if I bump it all the way down, you can notice that I'm getting a lot back in terms of detail of that lens right there. So if I scroll down a little bit, Go back to near zero, that's what it looked like when I exposed it. And as I go down in contrast, I'm starting to see more detail of the lens. Of course, you also get a very, very uh, flat image when you remove that much contrast, so that doesn't help. Let's go ahead and 
turn that back to zero and let's look at what happens when we move the highlights. All right, let me zoom back to fit again. So if I bump up the highlights, it definitely does brighten the image up so far. Looks pretty good. Let me zoom in and take a look at the wood grain. Yeah, it does do a pretty good job. This is uh, definitely not the most well lit. I didn't have all of my studio lighting on when I actually did this recording. I only had the back studio light on and then the default lights on uh, when I was doing this. So uh, overall, it was pretty dark of a room and it uh, looks like both cameras handled that pretty well. Let's look at the shadows. This is probably the most important one because what happens is that you always want to recover some shadows uh, when you're in a dark room. You want to get more details back. And as you can see, you're really starting to get back more details on the lens when you start recovering the shadows. Of course, you're also really kind of flattening out the image again, but Overall, it's pretty impressive what you can do. I'm not going to deal with the black and white. So let's go ahead, bump all this all the way up. Bump this all the way up and then reduce contrast all the way down. So this is a very flat image, but you can tell that you're getting a lot of detail back. Let's go ahead and zoom in at 150%. This is not a usable image, but it's kind of impressive to see what the image looks like uh, when you actually have it all the way at the extremes. It's still pretty good looking. So let's let's try to be somewhat sane about our numbers. Let's see. That isn't a bad looking image. I'm just having a little detail get having a little detail. Let's see if we can bump up saturation a little bit. Like that. That's not a bad looking picture right there. And uh, that's pretty aggressive on the color correction and it's still holding up really well. Let's go ahead and move over to the X-H1 and let's try to play around with the same things. So if we go ahead and play around with the brightness settings, obviously it looks like it gets blown out a little bit easier. Uh, you definitely don't need to go as high to lose all of the all of the information in terms of exposure uh, but like nobody actually changes it that much hmm, not bad in terms of the contrast if you go all the way down all the way up I think what you'll notice here is that in the lens that we're using, we're not getting back as much of the detail when we're reducing contrast as we did the other one. You just don't you just don't see the detail right there. But you also don't get as flat of an image, so take or leave it on that one. Like I said, I'm not really trying to compare the two. I'm just interested in seeing what's going on. I think I accidentally moved the highlight slide a little too much. So let's There's the highlight slide. Really not noticing too much of a change on the lens itself when I change when I move it around. Also the same thing with the contrast. Let's look at the shadows. Let's see if we can recover some details by moving the shadows. Really, I'm not seeing a, a great recovery in terms of the lens when I'm pushing these. So if I do the same thing, I push all of these to their limits, and then I reduce the contrast. I can kind of see the detail at this point. Oh, yeah, that's a really washed out image. So what happens if we just very quickly play with this? Then add a little bit of saturation back in. So as you can see, when we play with it, we're not getting back as much detail in the shadows as we were with the GH5. But overall, though, both cameras are still pretty impressive in their images. I mean, 
like I said, you know, when you go to 10-bit color depth, you expect to be able to uh, grade these a little bit more. This is just really a quick look at the grading of each one to see what's going on. Um, I can see a difference in terms of, you know, how much adjustment that I can do with the GH5. So that's what I'm really looking forward to, you know, is to be able to actually work with the color grading to see uh, what it can do and still have it to be in a portable setup. Obviously with a big camera like the Blackmagic, uh, I use that for my green screen work. That's the reason why I like working with 422 10-bit. I'm suspecting that the GH5, if I really wanted to, I can probably do some pretty good green screen work as well, but I'm um, probably not gonna be doing that just because I already have the Blackmagic camera set up. There's really no need to do that. But that's really just a quick look at these two cameras that I have right now. And I'm gonna be playing around with it a little bit more. Obviously, both these are in auto right now. I am learning how to use them uh, both in manual settings slowly. And you know, as you learn and progress, uh, you definitely want to do uh, other things. So having multiple cameras in your bag is actually, in my opinion, a really good thing. I still really love the Fujis. I probably wouldn't move away from them when it comes to vlogging, but you know, anything that's really in the studios, I might be switching over to the GH5 and also using, uh, continue using my Blackmagic cameras because both of these have really great adjustment abilities inside uh, Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro, but it's also a lot more work. So I'm gonna see how I can balance that, but uh, only time will tell.